totally works. Into an iPad, this is crazy. That just took so long to set up just for that one shot. So this thing is kind of out of the box for a lot of smaller interfaces and it should be because it's priced kind of out of that ballpark. I guess if you're gonna put it up in contention with something, the closest things would be like the UAD Thunderbolt series stuff. The closest things would be these. These guys right here, like the Apollos, where you've got your mic ins, you have ADA in, you can go up to 10. A lot of functionality here. Why I keep gravitating to this one is because it just does the thing and gets out of the way. That's not to say this is a bad little unit. This thing is killer. This is different. And again, in true fashion, uh, you've heard this a whole lot. You've heard it on kick and snare on some of the most proud drum tracks that I've ever tracked. You've heard it on a ton of vocals. We've got to see eye to eye somehow. I'm only here because of what you mean me. Big bear wolf in the room. Try to blow him up. I feel like a misuse. I did it to myself though. Tell a big dream to a mind that can't connect Cause if you come at all, then you better come correct Not living by my flesh, I feel the spirit in my breath I made my own problems, I don't act like this a test You've heard it on any number of product demos I've taken this thing with me on the road So why do I gravitate towards this thing? First of all, let's talk the sound of this unit And this comes with context this is not for everyone, just like this is not for everyone. So who is this for? Let me tell you a little bit about me, if you don't know who I am, and how I work. I have a full-fledged studio coming from the world of Apollos, but I'm now running Burl converters, Cappy preamps, vintage Neve preamps, a lot of outboard stuff, a lot of color getting pushed into things before it hits whatever DAW I happen to be using. This, this does very few things very well. And I think that's why a unit like this stands out. The preamps. Without getting too into detail, these preamps are better than anything I've tried on any mobile anything. Very, very impressed with the preamps. Not limiting in the least as far as a bus powered thing. And yeah, this, this is bus powered. The only thing you need is the cable going to your computer, which is more than I can say for this. I mean, there's a lot under the hood with something like this, and that requires power. Even more impressive what Neve has been able to do with a box like this. For me, I'm using the USB-C, but it does come with a couple USB connections, so whatever's right for your computer, you've got it right out of the box. On the back of this thing, we have our main outputs, left and right. We have channel one and channel two, send and receive, and that gets really interesting here in a bit. And we also have our ADA in and out. If we look over here on the Apollo, ADA in, still crazy useful. Here's where this starts to get interesting. So, this thing's bus powered, meaning you can use it with anything with the USB-C connection that can take an audio interface. So, iPads, computers, phones now, iPhone 15. This is a 14, unfortunately. I did try, I plugged it into somebody's iPhone 15, and it does work, pretty crazy. No software required to use something like this. I think unless you're Windows-based, so if you're Mac, it just recognizes it as an audio interface. It just works, awesome. With the iPad, you can use the ADAT in. You wanna talk about a compact setup. You have your laptop, this, and something like a Focusrite Claret, or even a dirt cheap ADAT preamp, and you can get two really, really good preamps and then eight more to get the job done. By the way, you have another ADAT out. So eight channels can go into something like a Behringer P16 module and now the band can monitor themselves. This may be the highest quality, most compact mobile recording interface out there, period. 
The amp in here for the headphones is solid. I still have my headphone jack in here. The monitoring on this thing, pretty flexible. Where you can choose to go direct, mix, or from the DAW when you're pressing these buttons. And all these buttons are pressable. Yeah, even the monitor. On the preamp, you're basically deciding do you want it as a mic, a line, or a DI? And I've been using this as a line input when testing other preamps. The Grace video that I just put out, the Roxy was line input into this. It's a fantastic line input. The converters in here are really, really good. The headphone preamp in this is really, really good. Let's talk about the elephant in the room and its price. So right now on Sweetwater, it is $12.45. That's an expensive little unit. And just for comparison, the Apollo Twins are anywhere between 1,000 and 1,500, depending what you want. When you're looking at it like that, it's not so different, is it? The argument could be made that there's a lot more under the hood here. You get more software options. You could have different sonic capabilities, if that's what you want. My argument would probably be, I just want the sound of what I'm miking. I don't really want to have to fuss with what emulation am I going with. Now there is a time and a place for this thing, to be sure. This is a killer little platform. This is something different. If you don't want to mess with console apps, you don't want to mess with third party in between software, you just want something that goes straight into your DAW. You don't want to have to fuss with any of that. This is that. If you want solid preamps, this is that. Speaking of preamps, at $12.45 for this unit. The equivalent preamp for this thing, the Neve 88R LB, the 500 series, $790. And you've got two of them in here. Granted, what you don't have is the pad. You don't have a high pass filter. You don't have a polarity flipper. There's only so much you can do with the electricity that is available on a bus powered interface. That said, I haven't missed those things. These are things that can happen under the hood. Are they helpful to have on the box? Oh yeah, they're helpful. But I have not minded not having those items and this kind of melts away in the process of creation. It does what it's supposed to do. It just needs one cable to your computer or your phone or your iPad and you're creating with killer sounds. The preamps don't leave anything to be desired. You don't really feel like you're on a small rig out in the woods somewhere. So out here in the woods, got the interface down here. There's no external power supply. It's just running off the computer, which had about 75% when I came out. It's about halfway now. Been out here like 45 minutes. Got the Vanguard with a super handy twistable head on this guy. We're on mid side and you can hear the woods and the fire, which is super cool. I don't know where else to get trees this clean in the woods with no power source. Pretty dope. This is how studio people do the dishes. big thing to talk about here is a send and return before conversion. What does that mean? And this is my big contention on why this thing is not overpriced. These preamps, if I wanted to go buy these, I'd be 1600 in. Well, I have them here. Whether or not this is plugged into a computer really doesn't matter. So if I plug this guy in here and then plug it into the power strip, now this thing's on and it's functioning. So if I use the sends of these channels, now this is just a housing for two preamps. Two killer preamps. The same preamps that are in Neve's flagship console right now. Yeah, you don't have a pad, but I've always got pads around. You don't have polarity, but you can flip that in your DAW. There's a couple things you give up, sure, but I feel like we're not talking about that very much. Even if you don't use this as an interface, these preamps are still insane. 
Now, I'm a Neve guy. I have a handful of vintage Neve preamps with EQs, vintage Neve channel strips, a couple 1073s, a 1084. I have some API stuff. I have some Cappy stuff, which is based on old API stuff. And they're different flavors, right? They're good flavors. Don't get me wrong. Something about just running into a Neve preamp that just feels good. It feels like records. It feels like you're hitting something beefy on the other end. And it makes kicks, snares, vocals just pop. So on the preamp itself, you can switch. Got mic, line, DI, phantom power on and off. These are combi jacks, so you can go in as an XLR or a quarter inch. This is where you can choose if you want the direct signal of the box itself just going to your ears. Mix of both, so on one side, you're gonna have the DAW, on one side, you're gonna have this. You could go with just the DAW, meaning you're not gonna hear directly from this box. You're just gonna hear what's coming out of Pro Tools or whatever you're using, and that's how I'm using it most of the time. Latency doesn't seem to be an issue, or you can have a mix in mono, which I don't really use. So if you were to mute your track in your DAW, you could hear the direct from this. Handy if you want zero latency, the options there. Build quality, I mean, it is a freaking tank. Took it on the road. I took it out to Nebraska on the cowboy trail when my buddy was running a 200 mile marathon, ultra marathon, sorry. <laughs> I played with it out there. It doesn't look like I've beaten this thing up and I haven't been precious with it. It's got the armrest material from the console. The touches here are really cool. They've gotten rid of what you don't need. What's here is what you do need with the added benefit of using them as just straight up preamps. And if that's all you're gonna use it for, that's a cheap way to get some really killer preamps. That's how I've been using it most of the time, unless I'm mobile. But let me show you the one two punch. Now we're getting somewhere. I bring this with me on the road and my iPad, and this is my recording rig. 10 channels in, 10 channels out, <laughs> if I bring my Behringer with me. And then I've got the band having ears as well. Still, how's this for a compact setup? I have not had anything like this in a very long time. And the cool part with an iPad, basically I'm using it as a tape machine. Of course you can do things in the DAWs on these guys. Pick your flavor of mobile DAW, whatever that is. Now obviously if you wanted the full Neve setup, you would have their eight channel Neve interface, the 1070. I don't have that, so we're going with the Claret, and trust me, it's a killer little setup, recording drums anywhere I want to. Having more than enough channels to do most things. I'm not doing like a full-fledged studio thing on the road, but I can record a band with this. A handful of mics on the drums, a singer, a guitar, I'm gold. A couple overdubs and we can record a record wherever you want. I tend to lean on these preamps way more than the Claret, though the Claret are transparent with the air button, you get that kind of extra lift there, super cool. But this, seamless. And if the iPad's not your flavor, yeah, it works for the computer too, just like you would imagine. I just wanted to see if it would work, and it totally does. The only bummer I have found is it won't work through a USB-C hub with the iPad, it has to be direct, meaning you're kind of limited on battery unless you have a case like this that also has a charging port on it. Otherwise, your time's pretty limited because this does suck some power. You get a good amount of time on an iPad Pro. I don't know those specs. I got a few hours just fine, but that is something I was having issues with trying to go through a USB hub. All in all, killer little unit. I haven't really found one that I love. I mean, the Apollos are great. I feel like they're built for desktop. There's a lot of ins and outs. There's a wall wart here. It's a great little unit. The Apogee, killer sounding little unit, but again, super clean, a little limited on the IO in comparison. So what they've done here is even more impressive. And you know, I don't like one trick ponies. So using it as preamps, it's not like it's gonna have a whole lot of desk time. It's not gonna not get touched. You have killer preamps here, and there's no reason not to use them in your everyday rig if you have some extra slots. If you were gonna buy the equivalent 500 series stuff, you're looking at around 800 bucks, and then you have to have the 500 series chassis to beat. If you're in a spot where you need a couple more preamps, my word, get you some preamps and get a killer mobile rig while you're at it. This thing feels like a lot of thought went into it, and I wholly appreciate the tools that are here versus the tools that they decided not to get rid of because of power constraints. I would much rather have those few constraints and be kind of untethered as far as cables go. One cable, you're good to go. Anyway guys, I'm Resident Loser Jeremy. If you want to hear more of this, go check out my Loughton video where you can hear this all over kick and snare.
Go ahead and give it a thumbs up. Subscribe if you're new. I'm Resident Loser Jeremy, and I'll see you in the next one. Thank you.